and welcome to Miranda Made. In today's video, I want to do a flip through of another gardening book called Gay Eyes Garden. It's all about permaculture and how to use permaculture techniques in your gardening. Let's take a look at that book. Gaia's Garden is yet another book that is very inspiring and one of those almost like a textbook but with also a lot of practical advice and I think as you can see it has um, won an award but not only that it's just full of so much information and knowledge that if you're someone who's wanting to start gardening, I think it's a great text to begin with. So let's open it and um, just see kind of what this book is all about in case you might be interested in adding it to your library. Okay, so looking at the table of contents, we have kind of an introduction to the ecological garden, a gardener's ecology, designing the ecological garden, bringing the soil to life, catching, conserving, and using water, plants for many uses, bringing in bees, birds, and other helpful animals, creating communities for the garden, designing garden guilds, growing a food forest, permaculture gardening in the city, and pop goes the garden. <laughs> this is a really well-written book. And um, today I'm just going to show you a bit of it because just to see if this might be something that you want to add to your library. As you can see, I also have tabs in here <laughs> because uh, once I started reading it, there was just stuff that I wanted to make notes about and um, re refer back to easily. So first of all, they introduce kind of what is permaculture. Um, what I would describe as bringing plants together in a companion related design that is sustainable and that works with the natural um, ecology that's already happening in that area. Going with the uh, natural resources and the uh, created design really and um, but of course there's a, a, a more thorough explanation within the book and um, but I'm not going to read that part to you what I do want to share with you is one of the stories that I highlighted in here because I think it really clearly shows just how effective permaculture can be and inspires you to want to actually use this design in your own garden so let me go to that part okay so it's at the beginning of chapter two and i'm going to go ahead and read this part to you because i think this is going to give you a really good idea of why permaculture can be so powerful and a great way to garden so it says something was stealing the bullock brothers food Joe Douglas and Sam Bullock had moved to Washington San Juan Islands in the early 1980s and set to work creating a food forest. Okay, so they um, basically have planted this food forest and then as time continues on, they enter into some challenges. So the edge of their property bordered a wetland reclaimed a few years before from abandoned farmland. At the marsh's edge, cattails grew in thick stands. Young cattail shoots are a delicious wild food, and for several springs and summers, the brothers had harvested the baby shoots, steamed or sautéed them, and added them to meals. But one year, they couldn't find any shoots, only tough, mature cattail stalks. Okay, so here <laughs> suddenly the cattails are disappearing and what happened is the culprit was quickly spotted. We noticed that as the bog matured and became more productive, the muskrat population was really taking off. So they had ended up having a muskrat problem that was eating all of the cattails and there wasn't enough predators for the muskrats. So, as they lamented the loss of their wild food, they 
refused to begin exterminating the culprits. Okay, so they decided they're not going to just kill them off. Instead, they waited. So a cat tell a season or two went by, then suddenly the tasty shoots were back, and the once busy harbor was more tranquil. The muskrat population had dwindled. What had happened? Otters moved in. Okay, so what ended up happening in their food forest was first there was a plethora of cattails, and then there was a muskrat problem. They were eating all of the cattails. And then otters came in and managed the muskrat population issue. So you can really see how uh, nature's design or creation is fixing its own problems that seem to arise at the beginning of transforming areas back into what they were originally, in this instance, a marsh. So that is definitely inspiring in itself and makes you think about your own property and your own land. What type of land is my yard actually or was it designed to be? Um, and then how can I work with nature to transform it either back into what it was or to keep it what it was supposed to be while also um, making it more productive so that I can get my own vegetables from it and things like that. So I thought that story was really inspiring and interesting and I didn't want to read it all because um, you should get this book for yourself and read it. But anyway, they talk about three ecological principles and um, and the end result was eventually a form of stability descended on the Bullock's land. Okay, but it does fluctuate. So this is interesting because even in a small scale, like for example, in my balcony with roses, I had such um, a spider mite issue. And it makes it more complicated because it's indoor. But if it was outdoor, maybe I don't need to panic over those spider mites. Maybe I need to let nature bring a bug to eat those spider mites. So this kind of thinking um, about solving any pest problems you might be facing. Okay, so as you can see, I've underlined several things um, and notes as I go through here and talking about like the mature garden and biodiversity and addressing companion planting and soil building, perennial using perennials versus annuals, um, which as you probably know, perennials are flowers that come back each year annuals are only for one year and um talking about plant communities so there's just a wealth of information in here and then it talks about how to design your garden and um gives you several different layouts and constructions and also, it just talks about planning your garden. So starting with observation, observation, seeing what is actually already happening in my garden, in my lawn, in my yard. And then um, planning, visioning and planning and development implementation. It talks about um, pear trees and things like that and the zone system. Um, and information like that. It gives you some layouts for gardens and talks about taking care of the soil and helping the soil to thrive and balance it out. Um, uh, talks about tilling and um, how to build the soil because you need good quality soil in order to raise plants. Um, and then uh, catching, conserving, and using water. So using like rainwater uh, to make more sustainable gardening and uh, making a harvesting system. And then it goes through talking about uh, different plants and their uses and how they contribute to the overall ecosystem. And talks about weeds, wild food, because, you know, being considerate of the plants in the area, um, what they're going to need. 
And then, yeah, working with those plants and animals together. And it gives you just a really great practical advice of how to build a permaculture and sustainable garden so that you're not always fighting with nature to grow your own food, but instead you're working with nature in a natural and sustainable way to uh, build the healthiest garden rather than one that you're constantly just fighting pests <laughs> in, but letting nature work together um, in the way that it was actually designed. All right. I hope you have enjoyed this film. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope that this was um, beneficial for you and your journey. And um, I will see you in the next video.